and down she goes. Get ready to change the fan clutch, at least get it off and wait for this one to show up today. So uh, complete our all our prep. Not much left to do. So we're going to work on that, get this fan clutch changed, and uh, just drive it more. So a few more days before we got to pack up and leave. So I make sure everything's ready and no surprises like the fan clutch was where it wasn't working. So we're going to get the new one on. All right, we're going to work on getting this fan clutch off. So I've done this before. I know what I'm going to do. I need to pull the air intake off so I have room to fish it out of here after I get it off the water pump. I'm going to take this off. You got to be real careful because there's an adapter ring right there to make up the extra size and it has wadded up before and then it'll suck dirt into your throttle body and that's no good. I'm hoping I can jar it loose with the wrench since it hasn't been on it very long or I might have to do the uh, air hammer trick where you actually take the air hammer on the edge of the nut and hit it and get it to break loose. But I'm hoping it's only been on here for a day. This might work. This is not looking like it's gonna work. One more thing here. Let's see if we can. Yep. Let me get a little pry bar in there and see what happens. See if I can get this pry bar between the pulley and the nut. That'd be enough to keep it from. Oh, it's not looking good. Ugh. Nope, we're gonna have to do the air hammer trick. That means it's gonna get loud. All right, it's gonna be a little loud, but this should do the trick. And there with the chisel. Round two. take much especially since this clutch hasn't been on here very long so we're gonna unscrew this we're gonna take the fan blades off to uh, wait for the new clutch to come the biggest thing is you need to know which direction this is if it's left hand or right hand threads the other day when I changed it I assumed it was left-handed threads there's the right handed threads. So, it's the wrong direction. If you hit it on with the air hammer, you end up tightening the clutch instead of loosening the clutch. And there we go. I'm gonna take these four bolts out of the back and uh, wait for the new clutch to come. You can see what I was actually doing in there very well. If you look right here, you can see where I hit it with the air chisel. 
hit it right on the edge there and get the nut to start turning and then you can break her loose real easy. Some people will take a serpentine belt and you wrap it around there and put like a pair of vice grips or something on the uh, belt to hold that pulley tight. And that works, but if you have access to an air hammer, this works really easy usually. And generally not worried about messing the nut up because more than likely if you're taking it off, you're replacing the fan clutch. So it's not a huge deal. So that's how I do it. I'm at the shop at least. If you're out on the road and doing it, uh, I carry like a big lineup heel bar and you can use that like a really long punch and a hammer and it'll do the same thing. It's just a little more work and I have to take some few more wax usually. So I think I'm gonna introduce something new in some of my videos. I think we're gonna call it Robert's Rant. Because I started talking about fans and uh, well, I got a little bit of a rant about it. Some of y'all might find it entertaining. Some of you might just think I'm a complete idiot, which is probably that. So, stay tuned for Robert Rant. All this fan clutch toss got me, uh, got an idea here to tell you about a little story and reason why I do certain things the way I do them. So, a lot of people will be like, oh, just go to electric fans. Electric fans, you know, they cool awesome, you know, and free up all this extra horsepower and they're the world's best thing since sliced bread well let me tell you from my first-hand experiences especially like on an adventure type rig or something you're gonna go out in the middle of nowhere in uh, electric fans fail and when they fail you're done there's nothing you can do other than drive fast to try to keep it cool and we all know when you're off-road, you can't always drive fast. Now, a clutch fan that's properly shrouded, especially like this, this is the actual shroud and everything for a 6.2 diesel truck, so it's ginormous radiator and shroud. But when they're shrouded correctly, they will move way more air than an electric fan could ever dream of moving when they're working properly. And even when they're not working properly, they still will move some air. And if it's still an issue, you can do some tricks to make the fan locked up permanent and it's not a clutch anymore. Uh, one of the easiest thing to do is if you carry self-drilling screws with you, pull off the fan clutch, and you take the self-drilling screw and you ram that sucker through the front of it, and you put a couple in there, it's gonna lock that thing up damn near solid so it's going to cool. It's going to sound like you're driving an airplane on takeoff, but it's not going to overheat and it's going to get you out of where you're at. So that is why I'm not an electric fan fan because I've seen too many failures and you're just SOL when they fail. And I know people are going to say, yeah, but you just carry a spare motor. Well, that's something else you got to carry again. And let's say your electrical system has an issue. Let's say that your alternator quits. Well, an electric fan pulls a lot of power. So how far are you gonna get with no electrical power trying to cool that thing off running everything else that needs to go? Because let's be honest, everything we got now has got electric fuel pumps, computers, and everything else running it. So just a little couple things to think about. Mainly, this is a lot of my opinion. A lot of it's from my experiences. Take it for what it's worth, but that's why you will never see me on a off-road rig with an electric fan. I will always have a mechanical fan unless there's absolutely no way around it. Even the little flat fin that I'm currently building, I am running a mechanical fan on it. It's not gonna be a clutch fan, it's gonna have to be a flex fan. And the other thing is, everybody's talking about you got more room with electric fan. And they do make slimline fans. This is true. I'm not arguing that point. But I have measured and measured on the little Jeep back here. There is more fan room with a flex fan than any electric fan I could find. Any electric fan I could find that fit the radiator I'm going to use was going to hit the water pump pulley. But meanwhile, I can run a mechanical fan on it, and there's enough room between the radiator and the fan not to worry about it. And I'll build a shroud for it. Fan I have in here now, uh, I don't know. I might put a bigger fan on it. 
after I took some measurements, I realized I could probably use a bigger fan. And I'll probably have a bigger one on it. And I'll have enough room on this one to put a small pusher fan. And that's where you're going to go, oh, but you don't like electric fans. That's auxiliary cooling. That's not your main cooling. Just things to think about. Especially if you do, like, adventure tile things where you go out in the middle of nowhere. It's just good practice. Just like kind of like kind of old school with the manual transmission thing, too, because... Even if there's a giant hole in the side of the transmission in this thing, and there's no oil in it, I'm getting out of where I'm at to at least a main road in civilization. Can't exactly say that for an automatic. All right, I'm gonna try to demonstrate what I was talking about earlier about locking the fan clutch up permanent with some screws. This thing right now, look, I'll show you. It is, hang on here, we'll get it. Look, just kicks out. It's, it's garbage. Now I'm gonna try to do the screw trick and show you what I'm talking about. Little tri tip, some people might know this, but like a quarter inch drive socket, if you got an electric drill that's got a half inch check on it, you can put that sucker right in there and tighten her up, nothing needed. And then you got yourself a nice big old nut driver. So, little trick, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't. All right, so I got those two screws rammed in there. I'll be honest with you, this first one really wasn't long enough screw. This one was longer and it broke off, but it's doing its job. Now that it's in there, this thing is solid. There is no give whatsoever. So now, instead of a clutch fan, you have a solid fan. And it's going to cool and get you out of where you're at. Just something to remember. Especially if you carry something to a screw in there. I've also, in the past, it didn't work as good. You can sometimes ram something up in here. Basically, you need to do anything you can make this nut not spin separately from this clutch. Some fan clutches are not a nut. It's going to be a thing that goes on your water pump for bolts, for older style stuff. But the front is the same kind of ordeal. You jam a screw in there, she's locked up solid. So, there's your lock up the fan clutch in an emergency trick. The more you know, I guess.